One of the most dangerous toys just happens to be one of the most educational, teaching lessons well beyond don't touch hot things when they're hot and don't inhale toxic fumes. This is a brand that helps you take the first step into the exciting worlds of both poured and injection plastics molding, vacuum forming, rapid prototyping, and low run direct market manufacturing with scary, scary bugs. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of creepy crawlers. Creepy Crawlers is the name of a manufacturing system disguised as a toy, an animated series, and a line of action figures. It's a brand that spans six generations and three different companies, responsible for more burns than a cornballer. Mother of God! Oh! Every damn time! Oh, this is a big one. In 1964, Mattel released the Vacuform in an attempt to build up their boys' toys business to go along with the massive success they were having on the girls' side, with Barbie launched in 1959, and also to try to get a piece of the growing market created by Kenner's Easy Bake Oven, released a year earlier in 1963. Mattel's Vacuform utilized a similar sales strategy to Barbie, sell a core unit, the Vacuform machine, and then sell additional components in the form of other accessory packs to extend the life and investment of the initial purchase. As long as you could find other types of toys for kids to make with vacuumed plastic, you could keep the toy in production and continue to sell the materials. Creepy Crawlers, introduced later in 1964, was not only an accessory pack for a new genre of toys, scary, scary bugs, but also changed the type of manufacturing that kids were learning. Vacuform was thin sheets of rigid plastic softened with heat and then shaped around the molds with a hand-operated suction pump. Creepy Crawlers introduced liquid plastic poured into molds that cured using the same heating tray already in the Vacuform hardware. Mattel's vacuum form evolved into the vacuum maker featuring creepy crawlers and both types of low volume manufacturing. Vacuum maker evolved into thing maker, which eliminated vacuum forming, focusing on the poured plastic functionality. The machine itself was half as expensive to produce. It essentially removed the entire second half of the vacuum forming production process and still allowed for a multitude of different themed sets to be sold. Same die cast metal molds, same proprietary plastic goop that was liquid in the tubes but cured or solidified after heating, same 400 degree electric heater hot plate to do that curing. From army figures to flowers to jewelry, the thing maker was relabeled and repackaged, but the standout performer, the line that gave all the others a blueprint, was Creepy Crawlers. Thing Maker would go on to different versions, incorporating multiple theme sets like the Triple Thing Maker, the Super Thing Maker, and the Put It All in One Giant Heavy Box full of crafting and manufacturing materials with 1969's Everything Maker, with Creepy Crawlers always being a core inclusion. The 60s were a different time for toys. Regulations were a bit more relaxed. The line between dangerous and educational was a bit squishier. Yes, it was an open metal plate being heated to 400 degrees. Yes, there were technically non-toxic fumes wafting up as the chemical makeup of those chemicals changed, but kids were learning and that can come at a price. This was a toy that was entertaining kids, but also preparing them for a job in the trades, preparing them for life. Look, not every kid had what it would take to be a doctor or a lawyer. If parents didn't want their kids joining the military, they really only had one other option, manufacturing. They hadn't invented jobs like YouTuber or Animal Psychic. Getting hurt while making something for other people to buy was a lesson they needed to learn early, learn fast, and learn well. But then the suits got involved and ruined all the good old fun. By the 1970s, Mattel had discontinued all the various maker sets and the Creepy Crawlers branding. Increased child protection and toy safety regulations made it hard to keep selling a 400 degree metal pan full of technically non-toxic chemicals to kids no matter how fun and dangerous it was. In 1978, Creepy Crawlers returned with the Thing Maker 2. Mattel had designed more safety features this time, plastic molds instead of metal, different formula of plastic goop, and a slightly different manufacturing process. Instead of heating up the metal molds, the plastic was melted while in the bottles, then poured into the plastic molds to cool and solidify. The process was much slower than the oven process, and the plastic didn't work as well. 
Thing Maker 2 would only roll out creepy crawlers and flower fun before returning once again to the Mattel archives. It stayed there long enough for Mattel's trademark to lapse. A toy company called Toy Max purchased it and in 1992 reintroduced creepy crawlers in a format much closer to the original, but still adhering to modern safety standards. It was important to bring back the proven functionality of the original toy in the hopes that kids would like it again, but also so the parents who grew up with it in the 60s would recognize it and buy it for their own nostalgic connection. Toy Max was a company founded in 1990 by three industry veterans. They had just sold their previous company, Toy Biz, to a group of investors that included Ron Perlman, the owner of Marvel Entertainment Group at the time. Flush with cash and happy to be out of the licensed character business, they brought back one of their own childhood favorites. Creepy crawlers had to play by the new rules, swapping the 400 degree electric hot plate for a hot light bulb named the Magic Maker Heater, similar to the kind that Kenner had used in their Easy Bake ovens for years. The liquid plastic was a slightly new formula that would function more efficiently with the bulb powered system and appropriate safety features were added. Toy Max had already been shown the path to success with Creepy Crawlers and the Magic Maker Oven System. They were able to scoop up multiple recognizable Mattel brand names, including Dolly Maker, Creeple People, and Mini Dragons. They also got back into the licensing game with sets taking advantage of popular characters like Bugs Bunny, Power Rangers, Batman, and Toy Story, but they didn't stop there. their energy source. Now they're charged and ready for action. <laughs> Gotta get the magic make away from Guggengrime. With Shocker Oak, Squirminator, and Spooky Goopy by my side, I will control the Creepy Crawlers forever! <laughs> creepy Crawlers action figures each sold with a bonus mold to make weapons in your Creepy Crawlers workshop sold separately from Toy Max. In 1994, Toy Max rolled out a Creepy Crawler syndicated animated series in the United States. It was produced in cooperation with Saban Entertainment, fresh off their hits X-Men the Animated Series and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It would run for two seasons, a total of 23 episodes through 1996. A 24th episode bridging the events of the two seasons was produced, but never aired. Chris Carter is just a kid working at a spooky magic shop with what can only be described as a very angry, very suspicious old man who used to be a magician and is now a terrible salesperson named Professor Guggengrime. I can't imagine how the application process went for this job, especially when Guggengrime gets angry at Chris for even trying to do magic tricks while on the sales floor. Illusion, Michael. Mm, trick is something a whore does for money. Chris is also a secret engineer. He invents a machine called the Magic Maker to go along with the various other mechanical tricks excuse me, illusions that the shop has in stock. Professor Guggengrime is disappointed that Chris is spending company time working on something other than selling or cleaning and also feels like he's being upstaged by Chris's ingenuity. Fate intervenes as Guggengrime just happens to have been tracking the movement of the planets and knows that a once in a millennium event is about to occur where the planets aligned and a new kind of magic briefly manifests. It turns the magic maker into a full on life generator resulting in the birth of three new humanoid creatures that are hybrids of scary scary bugs and magic tricks. Hocus Locust is a rope trick come to life. Tick Trick Tick, or T3 for short, is a shell game. Volt Jolt is the Magic Maker light bulb itself. Together they are the Goop Mandos, each possessing a Goop power pack in their abdomens. It's a tiny hourglass shaped plastic container full of goop that you can turn over to see the goop flow from one end to the other. In the animated series, the narrative function of the goop power pack is to force the goop mandos to rest upside down for a certain amount of time to recharge their powers, and I feel like I've given this more time than it needs. Short version, the goop mandos side with Chris, and Professor Guggengrime creates his own gang of goop powered minions to create mischief around the city. Chris is constantly trying to stop Guggengrime and get his magic maker back. I'm pretty sure he doesn't work at the magic shop anymore. <laughs> to go along with the show, Toy Max released a series of action figures and vehicles. All your favorite characters from the show are here. Chris, Guggengrime, Hocus Locust. Each figure comes with an exclusive mold for making character specific accessories with your Creepy Crawler's Magic Maker device. A place that was shown but never released. And you could also get the Guzuka Assault Vehicle. <laughs> Guzuka. <laughs> Assault vehicle. Just cut that in. <laughs> you probably missed the series the first time around. If you did, some episodes were released on VHS, but as of this video, the complete series has never been released on DVD and is not available on any streaming services. Other than a few episodes here on YouTube, it is a mostly forgotten, if not altogether lost series.
Toy Max would make cosmetic and functional changes to the Creepy Crawler's Magic Maker through the 90s, taking advantage of all the popular licenses like X-Men and Jurassic Park. By the time they started developing their own line of figures for you to make called Mutant Squad, Creepy Crawlers and the Magic Maker had once again run its course on retail shelves. The world's supply of rubber's scary, scary bugs fully replenished. Toy Max would take one more stab at a third revival of Creepy Crawlers and Dolly Maker in 2001, just before the entire company was purchased by Jax Pacific for roughly $55 million in cash and stock. Jax would continue to produce Creepy Crawlers, adding more licensed brands to the portfolio, including SpongeBob, Hello Kitty, Pokemon, and Scary Scary Star Wars. By 2010, Jax released a series of Toys R Us exclusive Creepy Crawlers that utilized a third plastic toy manufacturing process called injection molding. This is the actual process by which figures and Twinkies are made today. The two halves of the mold are pressed together, and then the plastic fills the empty cavity inside. It didn't last long on shelves because it didn't work that great. And I don't know, injection molding is a tough sell for kids in the 2010s. Adults, sure, I follow plenty of indie and bootleg toy makers on Instagram now, today, but kids were all about that Super Mario Galaxy life in 2010. Mattel tried to move things into the future, tried to retake the kids' home manufacturing market by announcing a new thing maker in 2016. Even without their flagship brand, the thing that made their home plastics production system so successful back in the 60s, they were going to be on the cutting edge of the new fourth manufacturing technology, 3D printing. A year later in 2017, they were still in the testing phase, and by March of 2019, Mattel finally admitted that they had canceled the project, but were super bummed that not only did they have to cancel it, but that they had to tell anyone about it. The worst part about bad news in a business is having to actually admit that it's true. In May of 2018, riding that last part of a wave that you can kind of boogie board on if you're really good at balancing while standing up, Paramount Pictures announced that a Creepy Crawlers film is in production. Those are my air quotes, not theirs. Not to be confused with the film called Creepy Crawlers that was released in 2000, sometimes also called They Nest, about a town in Maine overrun by scary, scary bugs. They are unrelated. Creepy Crawlers has been a part of kids' playtime for six decades and is poised to make that a seventh. Productive learning activities that result in a pocket full of toys is a win-win scenario with no downside. A new movie certainly means a return to Creepy Crawlers as a mass market product. Maybe a new cartoon, maybe new action figures. Perhaps this time it will incorporate a true 3D printer, perhaps a mobile game, maybe a CAD program, so you can properly rapid prototype your designs and be first to market with your own unique scary, scary books. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you haven't heard, we started a new second channel called Toy Galaxy 2, that's T-O-O. -O. Head over there and subscribe for stuff we don't post here. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy or become a YouTube channel member. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you ever had creepy crawlers or any of the other small volume manufacturing systems. I never personally owned one, but my younger brother had the 1990s creepy crawlers. That version doesn't get hot enough to burn and has a bunch of safety features, so even if you're you're trying to burn someone you're related to, it's really hard. So like, what's the point? You don't get it. <laughs>